All right, so we just heard from Scott about the importance of simulation and how valuable it is for federal equipment to be able to predict the performance of their models digitally before they're real. So I'm here with uh, Mark Seckler. Mark, hey, it's Bob. Hey, Rob. Bob how Williams, you how you doing? Auto Sim Squad. I'm doing well. Hey, how you doing? I'm all right. What you guys got going on? Oh, I heard all about the federal equipment company's use of simulation. Decided I was going to travel down here, talking to Mark, right on, finding well, out all about their use. Well, go ahead. Let me see what you guys got. So you were just telling me more about how you had taken sort of your original design here and through the use of simulation went in and modified the design. Yeah, we had a originally approved design and it was working fine, but we really thought we could make some product improvements on it and make it a better product. So we went from this welded design to this purely extruded design and what we did was we took every imaginable scenario that we could even think of ever possibly happening and analyzed both designs and then gave our customer a big old stack of paper saying here is every scenario you'll ever see for this equipment. So, so what, was the, what was the driving force though? Why was it that you were trying to change this design? Was it a cost issue, a safety issue, quality issue? Um, it was a little bit of everything. We, we knew we could save some money on it. So had you not been using Autodesk simulation <laughs> software, <laughs> how would you have been able to, to do this? Not in any sort of cost efficient manner. I mean, we would have had to, uh, our, our first start right out of the gate, we did a uh, you know pen and, pen, pen and paper calculation sure. of moment of inertia, assuming it was a uniform beam. And strangely enough, that came out with pretty mediocre results. And that was our starting point, and so that was great. But if we had just done something like that and gone straight to uh, a die for the extrusion facility, we would have been up a creek because we would have been out a lot of money on a die that was no good. So this is a, a great example of, of how simulation can fit into the design workflow. One other thing you were telling me though about is uh, there's rumors there's you guys are going to perform a test today. We've thrown that through simulation too because okay. uh, what we had was we had uh, an oversized drop design. We have to be, if we start dropping our equipment, we have to catch it. And we had designed it based completely on free fall, assuming gravity takes it over and we've built this real robust stout system. And the magnets don't let it free fall. I mean, this thing, you look like you could go over and catch it. It's so slow. So we redesigned it for more realistic inputs. And so we've analyzed it. This is our new drop stop. This We're, we're talking about a case here where power fails yep. and, and, and you have this deck and it, possibly it's empty or it's loaded with all types of ammunition. Power fails, this thing could start falling. We've got to make sure it stops, right? Well, the, 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 the platform itself won't fall, Okay. Um, but the vehicles that drive the platform can shift Okay. and we park the platform and then shift the vehicles. Now, if we lose power when we're shifting the vehicles, the power is all that's holding up the vehicle. So okay. we need something to catch them and the platform's already locked down on its brakes. So, so that's what we got here. Um, basically, uh, at the end of the day, we're just gonna put a big rubber bumper on it. Your simulation says this thing's going to stop. Hey, okay, no problem. So we can drop it like it's hot? That we can. We are gonna drop this thing, and we know it's gonna work, <laughs> as Autodesk simulation software said it's gonna work. It says we're gonna be just fine. All, All right, right, well, let's, let's go, go check let's go. this thing out. Uh, nice work, Bob. Hope to see many more of those examples from the Sim Squad coming to a YouTube theater near you. Next, I head over to the heliports division of FEC to see why you just can't land a helicopter on top of a building.